everyone. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Paola and today I'm very excited to introduce to you Julian Randall, author of Pilar Ramirez and The Escape from Safa. Yes, lovely, lovely cover. I love the color scheme. My eyes are lilac. You can't really tell because the lighting sucks, but they are lilac in honor of the book. Um, so Julian, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your book? Hi, everybody. My name is Julian Randall. Uh, I am a living queer Black poet from the Logan Square neighborhood of Chicago. And I'm a Virgo. I think that's everything uh, that is kind of central to me. This lovely book, which pulled up just the other day, uh, made my weekend, made my life, honestly, is uh, Pilar Ramirez and the Escape from Zafa, which comes out from Hope Books for Young Readers, March 1st. So Pilar is a story that I've been wanting to tell for 20 years. So to kind of back it up, I'm 28 years old now. When I was eight years old, I stumbled in on my mother crying, and it's the first time I'd ever seen her cry. Um, so obviously I needed to know what had caused this earth-shattering event. And it was that she was reading a book called uh, In the Time of the Butterflies by Julia Alvarez, which if you haven't had a chance to read it, is this stunning history of the, the four Mirabal sisters who led the revolution against Rafael Leon Miras Trujillo, who was the dictator of the Dominican Republic for 31 years. And so I asked her why this book was making her cry. And she said, this is the story of the women who fought back against the dictator who picked your abuelo off the island. So I, tear off the school the next day trying to find as many books as I can because I want to know how this is happening. I want to ask my abuelo, but he was, you know, a native Spanish speaker who I did not have uh, the fluency to like really take advantage of the stories that he had going on inside of him. And so when I asked my teachers, I asked my librarians and nobody could find me anything that was uh, appropriate for a kid my age read. So I always wanted to create a book that uh, engaged with not only the Turiato, but also like what has been the life and legacy and curiosities of the kids that are like kind of third gen. So Pilar comes from that. She is a 12 year old Black Dominicana who is an aspiring filmmaker, uh, making a documentary about her cousin who disappeared during Turiato 50 years ago. So when she hears that there's a professor at the University of Chicago who does research on the exact same subject, boom, she's on the next L. She pulls up to do his office hours and is so, as is so often the case, my guy is not there. However, what she does find is a folder with her cousin's exact name on it and only the only thing inside is a single blank sheet of paper. But as soon as she touches this sheet of paper, she finds herself whooshed off to the magical world of Zafa from the cover. I'm just going to show this as many times as I can. I'm, I'm so excited to be able to like hold it. But yes, so it turns out that on the magical island of Zafa, there is all kinds of Dominican mythos and magic. There's Siguapas and a council of Galipotes who have been leading the resistance against El Cuco, uh, the Dominican boogeyman who was in league with Trujillo the whole dang time. <clears throat> And he's the one who has her cousin. So now she has to find a way to save her cousin from this uh, horrible prison and get back home. So it's a story of finding your power, finding your history and finding a way back home. I love how high the stakes are. Like it's out of this world. I love it. And I also love that Pilar is a journalist. She's an aspiring filmmaker and she's trying to get to the bottom of the disappearance of her cousin. So what was the most rewarding thing about writing Pilar's story? So I have a, he's much older than he is in this picture, but I have a nephew, his name is Dominic, uh, and I'm his tío Julian. And I think that because this is the first time that I've written fiction, uh, I'm, my traditional training is as a poet, it was so cool to watch Pilar just kind of come more and more into herself and getting to know like what are the things that she notices in the same way that watching Dominic grow up across the years you know at first like it was all this and then and then and then and the moral of the story is that he saw a grave but over time it starts to hone in as he's getting more uh, on point with that so watching Pilar grow in more into herself grow more into her friendships with Carmen who's the Siguapa who 
uh, kind of shows her the ropes of how do you get around this place? How do we resolve? How do we start to try and resolve this conflict? Obviously, the ending, which I can't give, which I can't give anything away for, but the joy of watching that ending grow from the initial seed of my idea into this huge epic uh, rescue sequence. Thanks so much to the magic that is my uh, incredible editor, Brian Geffen, who is always there to push me to be like, no, like this is your story. This is Pilar's story. You can be as agential as you want, uh, which I think is so much what kids are reaching for. Ultimately, kids are very diligent scholars of power. We don't want to attribute it to them because we want to continue to believe that we two children and things that we uh, take away from children, they won't notice or they won't uh, really have the range to process. I was so excited for an opportunity to write a book that didn't talk down to kids about like a really huge question because that's that, that was the age gap, right? That was the barrier. There were books about what was happening, but there weren't books that people trusted me to understand. <laughs> And I'm really just proud of how this came out in terms of writing a book that I trust kids to understand and hopefully love. Yes, yes. I love what you said about not talking down to kids. Kids are incredibly perceptive. And I just, I love that you incorporated that into, into Pilar's story and how, how it came across. I think you can really tell how intentional um, you were. So if you found yourself in Safa, what creature would you be most excited to see? I would love to meet the Galipote sisters. I would, I, it would just, it would bring me such joy just to kind of like hear their dynamic with each other, though, if it's a question of it's a day trip rather than I'm here and I don't know how long it's going to be until I get back. If it's just a day trip, I would love to kick it with La Bruja for a little while. <laughs> and what creature would you be most terrified of coming across oh definitely a baka definitely like one of the bakas that are shaped like kids mm -mm, no <laughs> no or precisely one of those tales when I was a little kid and I said mommy I love you no more <laughs> this before bed I don't know so this is the fill in the blank section um the first book I loved was Ooh, uh, the people could fly. The first book I bought with my own money. Ooh, I think it was one of the Magic Treehouse books. My first book idea was. Ooh, okay. Yes, 2002. I was in fourth grade. I wrote a multi-chapter saga. <laughs> it's, it's funny because it's a it, it's one of those things where you can see like just the tiniest, tiniest parallel of Pilar because I wrote a story about a boy who inherited a magic katana and went through a portal in his locker to fight mutant spiders alongside the townsfolk who were terrorized by these mutant psychic spiders. When I got to the conclusion of the story five chapters later, because shout out to microfiction, I stapled all of the pages together. And the next time that my mom took me to Barnes and Noble, I don't know why I felt like this was a subversion but <laughs> situation, but I had it like tucked under my shirt <laughs> as I like walked into the store and I would sprint off to the kids section. So there I am running my hands along the, uh, the R section to find where I would be. And I slipped it out from under my shirt and kind of just tucked it in the side. So I was like, that's how books get, <laughs> go to the bookstore. You write them and then you drop them off. <laughs> so that was my first time having a story that I wrote in the bookstore. And You've been a published author since 2002. Like what? Amazing, love it. What's yeah. the song that reminds you the most of your book? Uh, La Diaspora, Nitty Scott. If you were a book, what section of the bookstore would you live in? Oof, clearance. <laughs> uh, yeah, clearance. I think that's, that's, that's the true multi-genre. All things come together there, and I always love the idea of spitting to a room full of like folks who normally wouldn't be together. So I think, yeah, clearance. 
Oh, okay. I like that interesting, interesting approach to, to the question. I love that. So what do you hope readers take away from Pilar's story? The power that she had, the power that folks said was insufficient, the power that folks said did not exist, the power that they said was invisible, was always enough. Even the magics that we don't know to call magic or that we are discouraged from calling magic, they were always legitimate and they were always on your side. Your power was always yours and it was always sufficient. And do you have any other projects that we should be excited about? Yes, two days from now, I get to talk to Brian about uh, the like nitty gritty edits of the Pilar sequel. It is the close of the duology and we're working on some other stuff as well that I don't think I'm allowed to say anything about on camera yet, but it is all very exciting. I could not possibly be more grateful that this is my life and it seems like it will be my life for a long time. I'm not going anywhere. So this is going to be a good time. Yes, I'm excited. I'm excited for Pilar's sequel. And shout out to Morgan for helping us coordinate this meeting. Morgan is here. Julian's publicist. Thank Congrats. you so much for being here with me, Julian. I really, really appreciate you taking time uh, to do this with me, to talk about Pilar. Look at that cover. I just, I adore it. Also, sorry, this is the first uh, interview that I'm doing where I have it in my hands. So I had to know what was under this dust jacket because I'd never seen it before. And I just want to say like, it's such a beautiful purple. And they've got the, uh, for those of y'all who are not familiar, the Mirabal sisters uh, were known as Las Mariposas. So the fact that they managed to include that as like a little Easter egg, I couldn't be, I couldn't be happy with it. Oh, I love the purple, love the gold on the spine. Naked hardbacks are always so exciting to see. Mm -hmm. I love them. Again, thank you so much for doing this with me. People at home, don't forget to check out the description below for all relevant links, including buy links for Pilar Ramirez and the escape from Safa, as well as Julian's website and socials. So, yeah, we will see you in another one, hopefully soon. Bye. Absolutely. Anytime. Thank you.